B. I'm meteorologist Mike Redden. Welcome to the Natural Health Show with one of New England's leading natural health care specialists, Mark Mincola. Call Mark at 781-837-4900 on 95.9 WATD. He's waiting to hear from you. Welcome home, Natural Health Nation. It's always great to have you on board with us this first summer weekend of the year. The Strawberry Moon. We're here to have a very special uh, conversation and a riffing evening it'll be. By riffing, I mean we're going to kind of riff back and forth. I have a longtime friend and associate, Dr. Joel Price, in studio. We're going to talk about some interesting stuff. Freeform Sunday, cholesterol myths, statin dangers, the calcium and dairy lies. We're going to talk about the causal roots between Alzheimer's and uh, some new studies about sugar and fat causing Alzheimer's. We're also going to talk about red meat, causal link with diabetes as well. And uh, I have interesting stuff here, too, regarding toxic foods. There was a bunch of pieces in the news this past week about uh, all the toxic elements in our common foods. Our most common foods are loaded with some really dangerous, dangerous chemical substances. We're going to talk about that as well. So we're going to get right into a break here real quickly and come back with Dr. Joel Price. And we're going to riff nutrition this evening. It's going to be a great show. Stay right where you are. Hi, it's Laura from Good Health. If you haven't seen our new market, stop by today. Try our testers, organic skin care, non-toxic sunscreens and insect repellents, and natural self-tanners. Sample our fresh handmade Calavo guacamole, or try Earth Cafe's raw cheesecakes. Our sandwich case includes sunny vegetarian snacks, macro dumplings, quinoa, and vegetarian sushis. For summer fun, you'll love our Wildwood organic gluten-free salsas and Johanna's truffles, crackers, and burger bites. On a sizzling day, there's nothing quite like one of our cold, refreshing, and hydrating electrolyte drinks or a fresh organic fruit smoothie. Come by Quincy or Hanover and cool off. Grab a healthy snack at our demo table, pick up free nutrition samples, protein packets, and literature at checkout. Seven days a week, the best products and the most delicious foods available at our everyday low prices. Summer at the new Good Health. It doesn't get any better. Thanks for listening. You know, when most people hear the word allergies, they think only of hay fever-like symptoms associated with airborne pollen, dust, and mold. But did you know that many experts estimate that between 60 and 80 million of us suffer from immune-related food allergies without even knowing it? Furthermore, food allergies often contribute to serious health problems such as autism, irritable bowel syndrome, ADD, headaches, and chronic ear infections. Now, there's an effective way to identify and eliminate both your food allergies and the troubling symptoms that they aggravate. Halitest Medical Labs at foodallergy.com offers a full complement of clinical, environmental, and food allergy testing to help you get to the root of your allergy problems. Halitest also provides you with a comprehensive rotation diet, lifestyle booklet, and a wallet card to help you live food allergy-free and stress-free. Do you wonder if you or your loved ones are among the 60 to 80 million food allergy sufferers in America? If so, log on to Halitest Medical Labs, foodallergy.com. Talk to your doctor about ordering a food allergy test from Halitest Medical Labs today. Foodallergy.com. Make sure the food you're eating isn't what's depleting you. Now, back to the Natural Health Show, sponsored by Good Health Natural Food, Alates Medical Labs, Santee Holistic Center, and Healthy Living Magazine. All right, welcome back, and uh, happy summer Sunday to one and all. And a pleasure to introduce a longtime friend and associate, terrific, terrific nutritionist, Dr. Joel Price. Joel, welcome. Hey, thanks. Great to have Good you evening. on board. And uh, we're going to do some riffing tonight. I've been looking forward to this because uh, I don't always have the great pleasure of being able to bounce this stuff back and forth with somebody who knows what they're doing. So, you know, one of the things we're going to talk about, and I think uh, a lot of folks really need to hear more about cholesterol myths and statin dangers. You've got tens of millions of Americans, of course, on statin drugs, uh, generating $31 billion in income every year. It's just incredible. Yet, 50% of all those Americans who die of heart attacks have normal cholesterols, and only 50% of those people who uh, are actually thought of as not having heart disease actually are those folks that are also on statin drugs. So it's kind of crazy. It is crazy. It's amazing how many, how often we have to tell patients, look, your, your body produces 85% of your, of your own cholesterol, all your hormones are, are made from cholesterol. It's an, it's an extremely important 
uh, substance in the body, and it's not uh, cholesterol. Just is is not the criminal. It may show up at the scene of the crime, but it's not the criminal. It shows up with calcium and plaques and, and fibrinogen and waxes uh, due to a host of various things going on in the body. It clings to saturated fat. It clings to saturated fat. And Clotting it, factor. And a lot of this happens in response to chronic acidosis in the body, which threatens to eat holes in your artery walls. So the body will send all these substances to, to uh, uh, plug any potential breaches. <clears throat> Problem is, short term it saves your life, long term it, it's going to kill you. So you've, you've got to look at nutrition and uh, pH balance and all, all kinds of other factors, uh, nutritional factors, to keep yourself uh, healthy. And of course you referred to uh, the work of 1984 two-time Nobel Prize winner uh, Dr. Michael Brown, who was uh, the two-time Nobel Prize winner about the, uh, the HMG coenzyme A reductase work that he did, signifying that 80% of our cholesterol, 80% is produced by our own liver, uh, triggered largely by the insulin-producing sugary, starchy, white flour products and processed sugars that we consume. So, uh, you know, again, I think the idea is that you've got a two-time Nobel Prize winner telling us what the root cause of this business is, and still people insist on uh, pushing this point about cholesterol over and over and over, and it's just kind of ad nauseum at this point. It's unbelievable. But it's generating Most, an awful lot of revenue. Yeah. Oh, well, that's it. Multi, Thirty-one billion dollars. Yeah, a year. multi-billion-dollar industry, and it's amazing how many medical doctors and even those in the scientific community keeps talking about fat dietary fat as causing most of the problem. As you, as you point out, it's it's sugars that. Uh, produce an insulin response which drives up c-reactive protein drives up c-reactive protein and literally prog- programs you for fat storage uh and for increased blood fats and thrombox a 2 of course clotting factor which is more the inflammatory root cause uh, from a lot of the arachidonic acid triggered by the white flour and sugar right the fats alone uh you know are probably not going to cause too much trouble but but when they're inflaming the walls of your arteries uh, then you're you're all the more likely to have um, imperfections, bubbling in the uh, the artery walls, and that's where the the buildup starts. And with 20 million Americans on statins, yet there are 300 <laughs> different side effects associated with statins. 300, count them. On top of the fact that uh, there's some new research just published in the journal Nature. <laughs> Uh, new scientific evidence from research, over 30 different studies that indicate that there are over 60,000 new diabetics per year triggered by statin drugs. 60,000 new diabetic diagnoses per year because of statin drugs. I love the commercials. Although a rare side effect, some <laughs> may experience muscle pain. Yeah, rare? It's, I would say most do. Because it, it the, 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 the statins notoriously... Uh, zap your muscles of the, of your of your coenzyme Q10 stores, and so you 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 don't produce enough ATP, uh, and so you know, and not to mention the potential liver damage. Of course, the other part of this equation that's rarely spoken about is the idea that the cluster, the erroneous cholesterol myth, is diverting millions of research dollars every year because of the fact that uh, it's really been pitched and sold by big pharma as the number one uh, boogeyman here. So. Think of the, think about the remarkable findings we could indeed uh, arrive at if that money was being properly spent on something other than cholesterol. <laughs> and we see over and over again, it is pitifully easy to lower bad cholesterols and lower total cholesterols in general uh, with diet alone. Exactly. Well, and you know the other part of that equation that I think it needs to be exposed a lot more is the re- the continually revised guidelines. I bring up the fact that in 2004, a panel of 11 experts, nine of whom were employed by the pharmaceutical world, uh, arrived at the conclusion that the low-density low lipoproteins, the LDLs, bad cholesterol, uh, were, 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 were readjusted, if you want to say that, or revised from 100 to, to 70 uh, LDL. 2002 went from 100 to 130 to 100. So in the course of, uh, in the course of two years, two short years, uh, the LDL revisions went from as much as 130 LDL points all the way down to 70 in two year in two year period. I think I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. 
So the amount of revenue that's been, of course, generated by these lowering revised numbers, of course, is just exponentially ridiculous. Anyway. And it's, it's, there's no science behind it whatsoever. Cholesterols get too low, uh, you're, you're at greater risk for, for certain cancers. You know, there's a threshold, a, a normal threshold for cholesterol levels. Uh, and so, because uh, cholesterol actually insulates cells, it insulates them and protects them against the thirty thousand DNA hits they get hit with every day. So you talk about uh, increasing immune risk factors. One of the quickest way to to uh, increase your immune risk factors is to uh, lower your cholesterol too much. There was a University of North Carolina medical school study back in the nineteen eighties that showed that uh, cholesterol under one hundred and sixty was actually indicative of a dangerous drop immunologically speaking and an increased dramatically immunological risks yet you see people I've, i see people every week they're they're, uh, they're showing cholesterols of 110 120 and they're still on statins i'm thinking that is just irresponsible it's crazy Pe- people don't they don't understand too that cholesterol isn't you know it's been demonized but it's not a bad thing that actually cholesterol insulates cells as we've been saying and also waterproof cells as well and uh, it's actually really important to understand that if you lower cholesterol too much, you can actually lower your body's hormone-producing machinery, which can be extremely dangerous. You know, g- going right along with that, people forget the, the epidemiological history behind this. If you look at the 1800s, uh, people on average had far, far higher cholesterols than they have now. And yet in the 1800s, there was a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the heart disease problems that we have today. Largely, so. largely because of the, uh, the, as you point out, the C-reactive protein issue, the inflammatory issues. We're, we're starting to really, I think, slowly but gradually uh, as a nation and as a nation of science, uh, slowly beginning to appreciate the, uh, the real truth about disease. You know, that so much of disease, they say 70, 72 percent of disease, all triggered by inflammatory hormones, the eicosanoid factor, the, the inflammatory hormone factor. This is, you know, if folks want to really find out whether or not they're in, in jeopardy of having serious heart disease issues, make sure your doctor runs a cardiac risk profile, CRP. And I think that uh, C-reactive protein is the way you want to go. So C-reactive protein is the first thing that I have your doc run to make sure that you're not uh, out, of, out of position there. And, uh, and as Joel pointed out earlier, make certain that your diet is appropriate. And I think most people know what to do about that right now. Should we uh, assume that or should we kind of go, let's go over that a little bit. I don't know. I still think we need to go over that a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) You've looked in a few shopping carts at the store, I suppose. Why don't you start off? Why don't you talk about food a little bit? Uh, Well, certainly become a a label reader if you're you're not already. Reduce simple sugars wherever you can, uh, and they show up in soups. They show up in uh, supposedly sugar-free cereals. You know, look at the sweeteners that you're consuming. Uh, remember that the fake sugars are not your friend because your pancreas. Modified pan- corn starch, corn sweeteners. Yeah, or even the, you know, things like overusing honey or some of the chemical sweeteners. The, a lot of people think that the chemical sweeteners like Splenda uh, are safe, but, the, you know, the problem is your pancreas responds hormonally to sweet flavor. So uh, it's good. It's still, these things can still. Uh, Cause you problems. Incite your you to overproduce insulin, which brings us right back to fat storage uh, and higher C-reactive proteins and uh, diabetes problems. Uh, so, and then obviously watch your saturated fats, um, hydrogenated fats too. You know, trans fatty acids. You know, it really kills me whenever I have parents come in, and of course, it seems like every week that I work. Uh, I have a parent come in and tell me about their kids having goldfish or something like that. You know, or cheese its these crackers that are after-school snack crackers that are just loaded with trans fatty acids or loaded with hydrogenation or loaded with uh, the kind of fats that the body does not recognize, does not really effort to remove and just build up in those arteries. These things used to be made with healthy vegetable oils like coconut oil exactly until the 80s where uh, there was a propaganda campaign against coconut oil and flax oil and some other oils uh, and so back uh, when they didn't differentiate between medium chain saturated fats right so they started using all these hydrogenated oils uh, in place and then we saw a, corresp- a corresponding increase in heart disease problems, uh, coronary artery disease, uh, diabetes problems, and on and on. 
So one of the first things folks want to think about doing perhaps is uh, making sure that they think in terms of whole foods. You're thinking in terms of uh, your produce, your, your organic veggies and fruits, uh, lean proteins, baked or broiled. Uh, think in terms of cutting down on the starches in general, cutting down on the sugars and uh, the artificial sweeteners, as you say. And uh, I think that's probably a good starting point. And uh, I think exercise isn't a bad idea to talk about either. I think the idea of consistent exercise, at least 20 minutes of aerobic exercise, at least moderately engaged uh, four times a week, that'd be, that'd be the bottom rung, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Just get you in the ball game. So those are really important factors. I think also you want to think in terms of uh, maybe maybe uh, rethinking this whole cholesterol thing. Do some research. Dr. Uh, Raven, what was his name? Uh, Ufe Ravenskov? Dr. Ufe, U-F-F-E, Ravenskov, who did a, a lion's share of that research back in the, well, from 1970 right up to the present. A lot of really detailed information about uh, a cholesterol being a demonized issue that, that really doesn't have any true meaning in terms of this heart disease factor. So uh, you can check out some of his work as well. If you want to simplify it, even Dr. Sinatra, Stephen T. Sinatra, the, the, late, the, uh, the great Steve, Stephen T. Sinatra has actually published a number of different uh, papers and pieces on the cholesterol myth and about statin, uh, statin drug uh, difficulties, et cetera. So there's a lot out there. Check it out, investigate it, and uh, take a peek at what your options are in terms of uh, natural medicines. We're going to talk about natural medicines now in terms of what could people take to support their their cholesterol lowering. And their, more importantly than cholesterol lowering, again, is their uh, heart smart program. I always tell people, if you really want to be heart smart about it, you want to make sure you're taking fish oils, of course. That's a really important component. Get those omega-3s up because that, again, really plays a huge role in terms of neutralizing the inflammatory properties that we're talking about here, the C-reactive protein. Cardiac risk profiles really require those, those omega-3s. Extremely important. Flax oil is not a bad idea. Flax seeds, uh, ground flax seeds, easy to put in your food in the morning. Um, so I think those are really important. Patterns. These things actually help disperse saturated fats Absolutely. as well. So they actually have uh, um, blood viscosity-lowering uh, potentials as well. They do, and I think po- folks need to hear also that you know, we tend to hear an awful lot of uh, mixed messages. You know, a lot of folks, of course, always asking the question, hey, does, is red wine good for you? I, I keep reading that that's, there, it's got resveratrol, and it's got a lot of antioxidants, and it lowers platelet response and all that kind of stuff. So what do people do? They go out and have six glasses of red wine. Now, folks, uh, you're probably going to reverse your <laughs> issue into a negative factor, causally speaking, because you're still dealing with sugar. You're still, you're still dealing with sugar that's going to convert and store as, as fat, trigger insulin levels, eat, and increase your inflammation. Hey, eat grapes, cherries, uh, more salmon, uh, uh, more high-fiber cereals. Get your veggies in. You get the, get the soluble fibers in. Eat more apples. Get the pectin levels up. Uh, have an apple at least once a day. A simple, simple things. Uh, simple whole food eating. Uh, fatty fish doesn't hurt either and I think that one of the, one important issue we want to talk about for a minute here is the farm raised factor. That's a really important heart smart factor to go over as well. A lot of folks are kind of, you know, looking for and seeking out when they go out to dinner uh, the fatty fish. Everybody's looking for the, the salmon, but uh, not clear about the fact that uh, the University of Alaska just released some news not too long ago stating that there are farm raised salmons that can be as high as 200 times higher in, in the saturated fats. So, I mean, you might as well go for the prime rib. It's more honest, you know. The, yeah, the, the, the simple question you have to ask is, what are these salmon eating? Exactly. The beef that you eat, what did, what did the, the, well, and the, the cow that, eat? And the, and the answer to that is, you know, salmon obviously being a seafaring fish is, is, is used to eating plankton and, and marine life. So this, the, all the fish of the sea are eating omega-3 foods. So their omega-3 properties are highly elevated, and that's why they're so beneficial when they're not farm-raised. But they're, when they're farm-raised, they're feeding them grain pellets. And so they're as deficient as we are and have similar... Probably not as bad as us. Similar health problems. <laughs> Couch potato fish. Yeah. So they're not quite as bad up as we are. We, you know, we're, our bodies, anthropologic, has been studied. We, we are designed biologically for a one-to-one ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. One-to-one. The average American is 17.5 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3s. We are 17 and a half times in the inflammatory column based on our fats. So, yeah, these fish are basically eating the same things we are, as Joel says. And I think that uh, they, are, they are fatty fish, all right, but they're like fatty humans, unfortunately. So Wrong kind of fatty. Wrong kind of fatty, exactly <laughs> right. So um, really important factor is to kind of steer away from and ask for, uh, steer away from, I should say, the farm-raised ask for wild fish, wild salmon, wild halibut, et cetera. The fattier the fish, the wilder the fish, the better it is. Um, we mentioned flax, too. I think flax is an important supplement to, to go along with your fish oils. 
you know, there's a lot of really interesting research for people who are interested in lowering their blood fats. The, um, the wild Indian gooseberry. Have you read about that stuff? There's a lot of research on that. A lot of people getting excited about wild Indian or just the Indian gooseberry. Uh, it's got a high logic acid concentration. It's very high in polyphenols. Indian gooseberry as a supplement is superb at lowering your lipids. A lot of great We don't stuff. usually think of uh, berries uh, as being able to do that kind of stuff. Exactly correct. But uh, you can check out the research on Indian gooseberry or wild Indian gooseberry. There are products out there. I usually like the Himalayan Herbs makes a product called Amla C, A-M-L-A. The only problem is there's a, those are 250 milligrams. I think it's going to take probably four a day. It's going to take 1,000 milligrams. There are other products you can find out there at uh, Good Health Natural Foods. Just ask for uh, Indian Gooseberry, and you want about 1,000 milligrams a day. All right, so do you think that uh, do you think at this point that uh, the, the tide has turned in terms of the information about heart disease, or do you think we're still, we're still in an uphill battle? I, I think it's starting to turn, but the misinformation is so all pervasive in terms of you know at least what you're getting from most of the the medical and uh, medical scientific community um, i mean par- some of some of these folks are starting to really turn around some of the cardiologists are really m- recommending more nutritional approaches uh, I, but overall i think there's a lot more information out there now due to or more metabolic approaches as well you know one of the things i want to make sure we talked about here before we uh, run to the bottom of the hour for breaks is um, you know this aspirin thing? Aspirin is a huge, huge component of this anti-inflammatory heart disease, heart smart business. A lot of people, of course, on the aspirin for that very reason, or baby aspirin, I should say. Yet, I think a lot of people are unaware of the fact that the, the original studies, and I know you're aware of this, high risk. The, the original studies actually differentiated the um, the uh, the British studies versus the American studies. Uh, we're looking at bufferin versus aspirin, and bufferin, of course, has what? Magnesium. It's like aspirin mm. plus magnesium. And if you really sort out and ferret out that information, those, those studies and that research, you'll find that, it, that it's, there's a question here as to whether the, the magnesium that was in the bufferin made the difference at blood thinning versus the aspirin itself. Not to mention that it's a, magnesium's a smooth muscle relaxer. Exactly correct. Uh, it regulates the heart. It, ca- it allows the heart to relax. So uh, how much of those factors are, are involved in the greater efficacy in preventing heart attack versus the non-magnesium uh, exactly. aspirin. Exactly, and I think that magnesium is so important, of course, when you think about the work of Dr. Stephen T. Sinatra, a lot of the research in metabolic cardiology these days, the latest research indicates that magnesium is a game-breaker. It's huge. It's so important. So it's really important to make sure, and I think a magnesium taurate probably is about as good as it gets, nerve membrane stabilization for the heart and for the brain. So Important to note here, too, how many people with hypertension high blood pressure are are very very low in magnesium very absolutely magnesium correct. deficient uh so those two things go hand in hand i would think absolutely correct and the last thing i want to talk about of course is coq10 i mean the ubiquinol ubiquinone extremely important and the research in europe of course is breakthrough they've had symposiums in the, in, in the medical community in europe specifically and focused entirely on coq10 not even recognized here in the u.s barely and I guess the studies on that particular brand are, are, are pretty good. It's, it's purportedly the, the active antioxidant uh, version of CoQ10. Is, am I saying that right? You or? are indeed. You are indeed. And I think that the real key to this is the heart is a muscle, obviously, and we tend to forget that in the Western world of medical science, but the heart is a muscle, and the cells within the muscle, the mitochondria, of course, within those cells represent the engine within the muscle cells of the heart's uh, the, the heart's fibers. So the important thing here is to realize that things like ubiquinol, you, CoQ10, if you will, is extremely uh, important and directly associated with the uh, the uh, beefing up of energy, if you want to say that adenosine triphosphate and adenosine triphosphate is for folks who don't know out there, it is the, uh, it's the fuel injection, if you will, for a cell. So it actually fuel injects, it, it injects the cells of, the, of your heart, precious heart muscle with energy and uh, how important is that? I mean, it doesn't get any more important than that. So a lot of the great uh, research over in Europe and, and, and worldwide of late regarding ubiquinone, ubiquinol, CoQ10. A lot of folks think that ubiquinol is actually more absorbable. It's an alcohol-based form. And uh, there's one study actually that was done in Japan not too long ago said that it's 450% more absorbable in its alcohol-based form. 450% more absorbable. So ubiquinol is probably a good way to go. 100 milligrams, good way to go. And jar of formulas makes a terrific, terrific uh, ubiquinol. So remember, if you're on statins, got to be on your CoQ10. That's a really important point because, folks, 
your statins wipe you out of CoQ10. And if you wipe out enough CoQ10, you will induce nothing but trouble for your heart. So, yeah, a lot of folks out there that are actually on statins, not on CoQ10. Hey, this has been a, a fun riff, a great jam so far. And uh, in case you just tuned in, we are talking with uh, Dr. Joel Price, longtime friend and associate. It's great to have somebody to riff with. Love having him in studio. You're listening to Mark McCole, The Natural Health Show, heard only on 95.9 FM WATD. We've got some messages for you. Be right back. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Mark Mincola. You know, over the past decade, The Natural Health Show has attracted many thousands of avid listeners. I'd like to extend an open invitation to all potential new sponsors to join our Natural Health Show family. If you own a Heart Smart Lighter Fair or seafood restaurant, a fitness or day spa, or if you're an allied health professional or coach, The Natural Health Show is the perfect place for you to make the direct connection with your demographic target. If you really want to zero in and aim the message of your vision directly at those who want to most know about it, join the Natural Health Show family of sponsors. I promise you'll be glad you did. For information, call Candida at 781-834-2728. That's 781-834-2728. With the burgeoning growth of the Natural Health Show, now's the perfect time to share in that growth together. Now, back to the Natural Health Show, sponsored by Good Health Natural Food, Alatess Medical Labs, Santee Holistic Center, and Healthy Living Magazine. Welcome back to our riffing and myth-busting evening with Dr. Joel Price. So, uh, I got an idea. Why don't you ch- 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 chat for just a moment or two about some of what you're, you've been up to. Let folks know what you're doing. You moved into some new offices in Weymouth, etc., and tell them what... Uh, What's going on with you? Oh, yeah, I moved my main office to uh, Weymouth recently, and that's that's great. Much more centrally, centrally located uh, office. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun being there. Give, uh, give your office number, too, while you're at it. Oh, uh, new phone number, uh, 781-331-4500. 781-331-4500. Give your website. Uh, website, energymedc at yahoo.com. Right. I'm sorry, that is the... Uh, no, energymedc.com. That way I just gave the email address. Yeah, energymedc.com is the website. And now you're going to receive a million emails. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> all right, so he's been busy doing his nutrition work. And uh, talk a little bit about your energy work, too. A lot of folks not familiar with uh, the energy therapeutics that you've been involved with. You've done some real breakthrough work. You and I kind of started something years ago. You've taken it off into a whole new realm. Yeah, I use a, a lot of color therapy uh, f- I use uh, full spectrum light therapy, and I, I've done a lot of research over the years using uh, frequency, uh, using equipment that produces various ranges of frequency, and putting together systems whereby we figure out what organs and glands uh, in major electrical zones of the body respond to what frequency ranges and why. Um, and it's been extremely effective for not just correcting. F- Physic- physically rooted problems or physically related problems, but working with mental, emotional level problems, addiction, depression, anxiety, um, and uh, any kind of a, a past emotional blockage problems that people so frequently have these days. And you've been doing this frequency energy healing work for a long time. You know, it's nothing new to you. About six or seven years now. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And uh, you've also been involved in a project. <laughs> doing some uh, editing for yours truly uh i gotta tell you that has been a real pleasure i, I i'm i i and i have to you, tell the you listeners are, you are I'm, you're, I, the final edits for my new book is, i'm pretty blown away by the book it is really something so anybody out there uh listening uh make sure you pick up whole health by mark mincola when it's uh It'll be out in january when it's out in january because wow and i mean any, anyone from psychologist to nutritionist to dentist to health enthusiasts uh, to social workers to I don't care who you are any any type of therapist at all um, the, the the useful strategies in this book in the understandings of of, of classical Chinese medicine and um, you know real true body mind spirit healing uh this is going to be a must read for anyone 
Uh, thank you so much. And you've, uh, you've contributed mightily. I mean, your edits are highly valued because you understand the material. You're going to be helping teach the material, etc. So I certainly appreciate your wonderful input. So let's uh, get back on point here. We've been talking about, uh, we've been riffing and myth busting here t- this evening. So let's, let's move in that same direction. You know, uh, one of the things, of course, you and I have talked a lot about over the years, the 18-year Harvard nurses study, 72,000 women, 72,000 women uh, looked at over a period of 18 years in the Harvard nurses study. And what they found, of course, in this particular study is that those women who consumed the highest amount of dairy products had the highest rate of bone fractures. I'm going to say that one more time because I, I know a few people just fell out of their couches at home. The women I could hear cons- it. <laughs> Sonic boom. Those women who consumed the highest highest amount of dairy products had the highest rate of bone fractures. Now, Joel, why don't you you riff on that? Well, this is important considering women are prolific dairy consumers. Uh, There's something about that in our culture. I mean, it's just yogurt, cottage cheese, uh, milk, uh, so forth. Uh, The problem here is that people don't understand that cow's milk uh, and products made from it, uh, it's an extremely acidifying food. Uh, So many people will have worse problems with uh, bone thinning than if they had stayed away from dairy Because acid is degenerative, folks. Your bones degenerate when they're uh, exposed to these highly acidic or acid-bearing foods. Not to mention the protein globules in cow's milk are 80 times more concentrated than human milk, so it's not quite a good match. And that's casein we're talking about. A lot of people, you know, it's funny when we do food testing in the office, uh, you'll test somebody for cow's milk and they'll say, okay, I I understand I'm I'm lactose intolerant. Wait a minute. Lactose is just one component for you. So many of these people also fail on casein, uh, where, you know, casein is, as Mark just points out, it's the protein in, in dairy. Uh, if you don't break it down, it turns to basically to Elmer's glue on your body and, <laughs> and turns very acidic. Uh, so there, there are many different allergens in dairy, and not to mention the, the uh, dairy fat itself is inflammatory. That doesn't help matters. Produces arachidonic acid, and it goes back to that heart disease issue, increasing the inflammatory componentry of the chemistry of the body. Not to mention the fact that the average American kid consumes 104 quarts of milk a year, 104 quarts a year. So there's no shortage of milk drinking. The kids are being, uh, I should say, they've been propagandized and parents have been propagandized and the the nation at at large has been sort of convinced that uh, you want to build strong, healthy bones, you got to get milk. And that's just uh, nothing more than an ad campaign, of course, that you've had uh, before your eyes and ears for for decades now. But it's, it's part of the same kind of myth that needs to be uh, myth busted as we as we're trying to do here this evening. Remember those studies in Ceylon and Bantu and all that. Uh, those re- those remarkable studies, uh, according to uh, these particular studies in Bantu and Ceylon and Japan and China, that found that the they took a large population studies and found that the uh, the average consumption in these in these areas in this particular study of uh, of calcium was something like 250 milligrams worth a day. And Americans are 1,500 a day. Oh, this is a huge point. Uh, it's, it's not, we are not calcium deficient in this country. That is not the problem. Osteoporosis is not caused by calcium deficiency. It is caused by the inability to absorb and regulate calcium in the body. Because uh, of pH. Yeah, and, and regulate uh, acid alkaline balance. Not to mention, uh, dairy has been shown to interfere with magnesium absorption and interfere with phosphorus absorption, both of which are just as important for healthy bones as calcium is. Uh, so, you know, and as Mark is pointing out here, it's been, as it's been said before, it's almost, you know, the, the dairy industry ha- has the psychological rights, per se, to uh, bone health. And it's a... Uh, it's a myth that needs and the, to... And the can, economic power to maintain it and sustain correct. it, uh, as does Big Pharma regarding a statin drug, etc. So that's the way the game's played in the U.S. of A, folks. You got the dough, you got the way to to drum that information Pay out to there. play. Pay to play, that's it. So again, uh, take a look at the 18-year Harvard nurses study. 72,000 72, nurses, women were studied over almost 20 years, 18-year period. Those who consume the highest amount of dairy, the highest rate of bone fractures, because it's an animal protein. It's not 
you know, the calcium in dairy products is not like the calcium in plant type products, which have living enzymes, which which um, dairy does not. Uh, a balance of magnesium and calcium, which it does not. It has the ability to uh, to support its its absorption because of its alkalinity. So it's alkaline, it's enzyme rich, and it's balanced in magnesium when you take calcium from a vegetable source. It's not a matter of beefing up the numbers and saying, yeah, but I can get so many more milligrams of calcium in dairy products. The numbers mean nothing. It's not, it's not a basketball game, folks. It doesn't matter. The healthiest bones on the planet belong to those who eat a lot of vegetables. And again, those, those studies we talked about earlier from Ceylon, Bantu, China, Japan, those remarkable population studies of over hundreds of thousands of people uh, back in the 80s indicated very clearly that they're consuming one-seventh to one-tenth the amount of calcium that we do and have one-tenth the rate of bone fractures and osteoporosis. So it's not about the calcium myth, folks. It's about your pH. It's about, you know, let's, let's go over that for a minute. If, if it's not about drinking milk, what is it about? What should they be doing? You just pointed out a lot of green leafy vegetables. That's numero uno. Dark green leafies, uh, almonds, uh, other other nuts are also can be high in uh, calcium. Um, fish can have uh, significant sources. Of, but but I think the bigger point is beyond just trying to beef up on calcium is trying to more more efficiently utilize what calcium does come into the body. The idea of maintaining right. an alkaline pH. And again, you can go to Good Health Natural Foods, get the urinary pH strips. Make sure your urine is between six point four and six point eight. Your first morning's urine doesn't want to be in the fives, folks. And a lot of these people have osteoporosis, bone problems. I'll guarantee you 99% of them have a pH, a urinary pH first thing in the morning in the fives. You want to be 6.4 to 6.8. A lot of this is preventing calcium loss in the first place. That's right. If you're preventing loss, you're, you're more than halfway home w- with all of this. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing how much calcium loss we experience from eating way too much sugar, uh, way too many acidifying foods, uh, and not getting enough alkalining foods, not getting uh, enough sunlight, not getting enough vitamin D, not getting any weight-bearing exercise. And one too many traffic jams. Exactly. When you think about Stress. When you think about Bantu and Ceylon, there's no traffic jams there. Right. So, so their pH is, of course, more stable. Lower calcium intake by one-seventh to one-tenth, and one-tenth the rate of osteoporosis and bone problems because they're not crazy. They're not going nuts. Here in the USA, of course, our stress levels are, are through the roof. So with the amount of stress that we're contending with, we produce a higher amount of acidosis. Acid is degenerative, and it's eating up your bones, and it's borrowing from your bone banks, folks. And I think that's probably the single most important thing is keep that pH stable, keep your brain and your mind stable, and it's all about maintaining a, a buffered pH, an alkaline pH. Don't eat up your own bones with stress. Yeah, I mean, uh, and like we were saying earlier with magnesium, stress directly, uh, magnesium is one of the... Uh, number one uh, minerals that stress depletes and uh, as we were just saying earlier magnesium is just as important for uh, bone formation as calcium is you know one of the other things we want to talk about is uh, a lot of the pharmaceutical bone builders you know there's a lot of problems with right. those i mean the right. idea that folks don't understand the bonivas of the world and some of these these quote uh, the the uh, bone builders that you constantly see advertised on, on television. The quote-unquote bone builders. The, yeah, the quote-unquote bone Here's the bottom line. The bottom line of it is there's a bone matrix that you have. I love when Catherine Foley came in this pro- program one night and uh, from Jar of Formulas, and she brought up the point that think about sea coral. Now think about a hockey puck. They're both hard. If you hit them both with a hammer, one chips and one doesn't. It's about the bone matrix. It's about the silicone and the phosphorus within that bone matrix. So if you have enough silicone and phosphorus within your bone matrix, you're producing a hockey puck-like bone system as opposed to coral. Now, the the pharmaceutical approach, of course, a lot of the bone builders, the quote-unquote bone builders, they actually model the bone, and it actually produces more of a coral type of thing. So you you fall down and you hurt yourself, it's going to snap. Meaning the bone actually becomes more porous. More, more porous. I thought I thought these drugs were supposed to do the opposite of that. Surprise, surprise, as Gumber Powell once said. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so you want to make sure that uh, you're eating properly, and most importantly, maintaining your pH, 6.4 to 6.8, urinary pH. First thing in the morning, keep the stress levels down. Take plenty of uh, take plenty of hydration as well. Plenty of pure water help that hydration response. The pH is all about uh, maintaining a buffered pH that doesn't allow your bones to be eaten by your stress-producing acidosis. There it is in a nutshell. All right, um, we're going to take a break in five minutes here, but uh, before we do that, I want to kind of move on to this one. We want to make sure we cover this. University of Washington study published uh, June 17th, just recently, uh, published in the Journal of American Medicine's Neurology. 
beta amyloid peptides in the brain caused by saturated fat and high glycemic index uh, foods are the central causal agents in Alzheimer's disease. Now, that shouldn't be a great surprise to anybody, but, but they're at least confirming the fact that it's not just this randomized placking that takes place. They're actually trying to get to the bottom of it from a food or a nutrition perspective. And it's kind of a similar thing we talked about with heart disease business a little while ago, the idea that science is now pinning the fact down that when you are eating a lot of sugar, folks, when you're eating a lot of white flour, you're eating a lot of high glycemic insulin producing foods, nothing good happens. Inflammation not only in the heart happens, but inflammation in the brain happens in the form of amylo- beta amyloid or Alzheimer producing plaques. So things get plaquey, blood fats get plaquey, and it doesn't allow the blood and oxygen to flow to the heart. The brain gets plaquey, and it doesn't allow those neurons to actually operate the way they, they're designed to operate. And again, the delivery of blood and nutrients to the brain, equally important. Plaques keep that from happening. Plaques are the end result of insulin from sugar, white flour, sticky, gooey stuff. Desserts, sugars, highly processed carbs. Bad stuff, and I would think uh, that the brain vessels are even more susceptible than the heart. They're, they're a whole lot smaller. Uh, so you, they need a, that much more protection. Uh, and it certainly makes sense they're going to be just as susceptible uh, from uh, what you're putting in your body. 2005, those are remarkable studies were done at uh, UCLA Medical Hospital in conjunction with the... Um, the Veterans Administration back in 2005 that actually found that DHA, dicosahexaenoic acid from fish oils, when used in conjunction with EGCG or epigallocatechin gallate from green tea, actually reversed the placking that causes Alzheimer's in uh, 60% of the animals studied that were actually uh, they were actually injected with human placking agents. So the idea that um, fish oils are emulsifying, they have an emulsifying property, an anti-inflammatory property as does the EGCG from the uh, epigallocatechin and gallate from green tea. So if you think about green tea and fish oils, anti-inflammatory properties were actually able to reverse almost 70%, almost three quarters of that uh, placking business that uh, had been induced in these, a- human placking agents induced in these animals in these studies. So again, you know, you're, you're thinking about stuff that actually plaques and stuff that reverses a placking agent. So it's anti-inflammatory versus inflammatory, same story. If Alzheimer's runs in your family, it's it's not a sure bet that you're going to get some degree of Alzheimer's. Uh, if you're eating right and you're taking the right uh, natural supplements, uh, you stand a great chance of staving uh, staving that off. Uh, you know we're we're made to believe by the medical establishment that everything is predisposition. It's genetic. But it's not. It's precipitation. It's Dr. what, you're, what Dr. you're doing. Dr. J. Craig Venter, who is the father of the modern human genome, said genetic determinism has been dead for 25 years. Stop selling drugs with it. Doesn't work. Right. Bruce, Bruce Lipton uh, with the epigenetics. Genes do not control our biology. Not only that, you can change a gene in seven-tenths of a second with a thought. So the way genes fire, the way genes operate, the way, the way genes switch on and switch off, you can operate in seven tenths of a second. You can't change your genes, we know that. One tenth of one percent every 250 generations, forget trying to change. Now, if you want to learn more about what he just said, definitely get his book when it comes out in January. He really gets into it in, in this book, and it's, it is just great material. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So um, in terms of folks, you just mentioned a really important point, taking the right supplements. I mean, eating the right foods, the same old story as with the heart, it is with the brain. Cutting down on the sugars, the white flour products, that the snacky stuff, of course, that so many people are attracted to. The kids are eating their starchy foods. By the time they're adults, they're, they're, they're programmed to have starchy stuff. And then we got to stop that. we got to start giving kids different snacks. And adults got to go a different way, too. So less sugar, less white flour, less starch, less insulin, less plaques in the heart, less plaques in the brain. There's the message there. In terms of supplements... We kind of gave you a tip on that a minute ago. DHA, dicosahexaenoic acid, a great isolated fish oil and omega one of the omega three fish oil fats. DHA, five hundred milligrams, two a day. Also, EGCG, epigallocatechin and gallate, easy for me to see, and nothing more than uh, an antioxidant from green tea. And it's really superb as far as opening up these plaques and lowering the the uh, the, the agents that, of course, cause the Alzheimer's disease. The uh, the beta amyloid peptides. And the EGCG Max product Great has, product. has the highest concentration of any product out there, I think, That's still. exactly correct. 700 milligram tablets. Mm. Now, it's kind of interesting. This, they, they actually developed this product 
off of this study that that they did out at UCLA that I referred to. This study at UCLA indicated that uh, the uh, the human translated dose that was the dose equivalency was uh, 1,200 milligrams. So 1,200 take two milligrams, a day. Take you're two good. A day, you're 14. And you're good to go. So uh, that's exactly correct. Beta amyloid plaques uh, are not. They're, they're not an, an automatic slam dunk, you know, regardless of what's happened with your previous history, mom, dad, grandmom, granddad. As Joel points out, eat differently, start young, and uh, cut down on that sugar, that starch, and uh, also make sure you get the uh, supplements going as well. Um, real important information. Also, let's uh, just start the process here with uh, the three studies, 149,000 women, 140,000 men and women, rather, June 17th, published in the uh, Journal of American Internal Medicine online. The uh, re- remarkable stuff that uh, red meat is directly correlative now with an increase of type 2 diabetes. So now they're actually, you know, for years we thought about um, diabetes as a, not, not so much as an inflammatory condition. We thought about diabetes as purely a sugar type condition. And, okay, if you don't want to become type 2 diabetic, cool it with the sugar and the white flour. Of course, that is still Eat a Eat more mess. protein and That's veggies. Right. That's yeah. right. Exactly right. So uh, this is sl- slightly different and, and somewhat controversial slant that's been put on this issue. But it comes back to, if you ask me anyway, the inflammatory uh, issue again. You know, we're back to thromboxane A2. We're back to the idea of, of driving up your leukotriene B4s, all those inflammatory hormones as a result of the eicosanoid 2 factors. So inflammation such as even too much peanut butter, too, much a- too many egg yolks, too much red meat. Of course, beef, again, high in arachidonic acid like those other foods you just mentioned, probably getting higher by the year because of what cows are fed and because of what they're not fed, because of what they're injected with, uh, and, and on and on. Uh, so, it, you know, this is not like eating uh, beef from a cow that ate grass and uh, grew up and had a, a normal life of grazing and uh, sunning and, and then being slaughtered in, in at least some kind of humane way. Indeed true. His, the dulcet tones of... Uh Longtime friend and associate, Dr. Joel Price. And we've been riffing and myth busting tonight, and we've been having a lot of fun with a lot of really important uh, nutrition issues. And uh, hope you've been listening and enjoying. And uh, Joel, why don't you give your, uh, give your office info again there for folks who are interested in checking up on you? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, new location is uh, in Weymouth, uh, just about a, a half minute from exit 16 off Route 3A. It's 210 Winter Street, Suite 302. And again, the new landline there, 781-331-4500. And your website? Uh, energymedc.com, energymedc.com. We'll be back with more riffing and myth-busting in a minute. Stay right where you be. Are you one of the 20 million Americans suffering from neuropathy, shingles, or chronic nerve pain? In the last three years, many people have discovered excellent and affordable treatment for diabetic post-chemotherapy, and other types of neuropathy and chronic pain. Dr. John Hayes, chiropractic physician since 1981 on Route 53 in Norwell, has had such astounding results with his unique neuropathy program that he's now teaching his remarkable system to doctors around the country. His most recent book, entitled Beating Neuropathy, remains a bestseller. In fact, Dr. John Hayes is the world's exclusive educator and trainer for rebuilder medical technologies. Call Dr. Hayes off is 24-7 to schedule a free neuropathy analysis. Call 781-659-7989. That's 781-659-7989. Call now while free neuropathy analysis slots are open. Now, back to The Natural Health Show, sponsored by Good Health Natural Food, Alatess Medical Labs, Santee Holistic Center, and Healthy Living Magazine. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you have enjoyed our riff and our myth-busting evening here. It's been a lot of fun for me. Special treat uh, to have Joel Price on board here with us. You know, uh, we've covered, I think, most of the significant stuff. I I didn't want to uh, completely uh, escape this whole issue of uh, toxic foods. You know, the idea that uh, a lot of the common foods we're consuming, a lot of interesting stuff in the news pipelines this past week or two about artificial dyes, of course, and uh, things like uh, bromides, and potassium bromates, and all that stuff. I think really it's an important point that uh, folks really now start to consider the fact that organic foods are kind of, we're there. You know, for years we said, I can't afford it. Someday soon we're going to have to kind of press on and go strictly organic. We, we really are there. We're, we're totally into this uh, phase right now of organic foods. We're, we're no longer able to, uh, I think, feign that whole that whole reality. Because, again, when you when you look at this information... Uh, 
again, you can actually go to the internet and check um, Eight Toxic Foods, a Little Chemical Education in the Pipeline by Corante, C-O-R-A-N-T-E. It's a pretty interesting article. But he, he talks about here, he says, artificial dyes are made from chemicals derived from petroleum, which is also used to make gasoline, diesel fuel, asphalt, uh, and tar. Artificial dyes have been linked to brain cancer, nerve cell deterioration, hyperactivity, just to name a few. So, I mean, it, it, it goes on and on again. It's published June 21st, uh, and it's called Corante, C-O-R-A-N-T-E. The, the, uh, the uh, article's quite interesting. It's the, the, um, you'll find another eight toxic foods, a little chemical education in the pipeline. Also, you know, they're talking about Alestra, O-L-E-S-T-R-A, which really kind of bombed. Alestra came on the scene. No, I'm yeah, I haven't heard that name in a while. Yeah, it's been a while. But Alestra basically is a is an agent that they made. <clears throat> it's a non-caloric fat substitute designed to make fat-free potato chips. Uh, but it interferes with the absorption of fats and vitamins and all that stuff. And the fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin E. Uh, but uh, no longer really too much in the, in the marketplace. A little bit of but, uh, low-fat potato chip stuff that has a lustra. <coughs> Excuse me. Number three, brom- brominated vegetable oils. Now, this stuff's really nasty. Um, bromine is a chemical used to stop carpets from catching on fire. They're putting it in your breads, folks. We don't want your breads to burn on the shelves, you know. Anyway, this just gives you a slight, uh, a small p- picture as to what's going on. There. You can see why drinking it may not be the best idea. Uh, BVO is linked to major organ system damage, birth defects, growth problems, schizophrenia, and hearing loss. So there is brom- brominated vegetable oils all over the place out there in different foods. Remember the story about acrylamide in <laughs> yes, French yes, fries? Yes, yes, so a yes. lot of French fry eaters out there. Uh, was, what, what was the, the skinny on acrylamide? I forget. That. It, was, it was jet fuel. Oh, geez. Rocket fuel. That they were actually putting in French fries. If only the French fries gave you energy uh, akin <laughs> to rocket fuel, <laughs> then it might be worth it. Also, uh, brominated vegetable oils found in uh, citrus-flavored sodas. A lot of the sports drinks loaded with it. A lot of the sport- So here you are, like, you know, you're an athlete, and you're thinking, hey, this, is, this says sports drink. I'm ready to go here. And you're talking about brominated vegetable oils in the sports drinks right now. It's highly toxic stuff. Uh, so there's a, God forbid they put some nice, healthy, medium-chain triglycerides in there to actually help you with your energy levels. Linked to major organ system damage, birth defects, growth problems, schizophrenia, hearing loss. And on it goes. So BVOs, stay away from BVOs. Uh, potassium bromate is also one of the more common harmful chemicals found in vegetables these days. Potassium bromate is uh, different from bromide and uh, different from bromine. But the idea, the idea is the same here. Um, it's used in military explosives, let's put it that way. <laughs> Linked to kidney damage, uh, certain cancers, nervous system damage. So again, these are. If you want to take a look at this, go on the internet. Eight toxic foods. That's all you have to do. Is search eight toxic foods. The subtitle is a little chemical education in the pipeline. And uh, again, it goes on and on and on. Uh, talks about a variety of different toxins that are in your foods. Growth hormones, of course. We've uh, we've been aware of growth hormones for years. And one of the really important things we go back to milk. We didn't talk about this earlier. We talked about milk and dairy products. But dairy products are loaded with uh, IGF one. Which are there's a direct link between the uh, the synthetic growth hormone and the triggering of insulin growth factor one, which is uh, directly correlated with a variety of different cancers. And breast, uterine. Breast, uterine cancers, a linked increased risk of a number of different cancers. So, IGF one is something that is not user friendly. It's a high cancer risk, and it's triggered by the synthetic hormones that are, of course, the growth hormones that are often implanted in a lot of your milks out there and. You know, not a good, not a good direction to go in. So a lot of commercial milks, of course, like we said earlier, not only are they not good for your calcium, they're not good for your immune system. So beware of that. So I think another important area to where we need to stay away from chemicals is in the cosmetic industry, and there's some encouraging movement in that area. Uh, you see a lot more uh, shampoos and personal care items that are moving away, that moving towards com- uh, being completely chemical free. You go to CVS now, you see a lot of shampoo companies that are using absolutely no no sulfates, no no uh, waxes, uh, none of the usual chemicals uh, in a typical commercial shampoos. So. Well, we are, we're living, unfortunately, in a world full of... Uh, the, the, the pipeline is loaded, and uh, it's not always the, these illicit uh, chemicals. It's often the pharmaceutical chemicals. So 
If we're not getting hit one way, we're getting hit, getting hit another. If it's not the food, it's the medicine. If it's not the medicine, it's the, it's the cosmetics, and on we go. So it's, uh, again, really important issue that I think people think in terms of, at least from a food perspective, going organic. If ever there was a time to simply uh, get ready to just get your organic uh, fix happening, it's right about now. So get on down to Good Health Natural Foods. And by the way, have you seen the new Good Health Natural Foods in Quincy? Yeah, it came out pretty nice. Beautiful I job. They, they spared no expense. They did Beautiful. a great, great job down there. For those of you in Radio Land, if you've not gotten down to Good Health Natural Foods in Quincy, give it a go. It's just remarkable. Get down there and check it out. And uh, I think you'd be pretty impressed. They, they uh, did a great job down there. Well, uh, Joel, why don't you give your information one more time for everybody. The, Dr. Joel Price has been joining us this evening. Great to have him on board. He's a spectacular nutritionist, and he's uh, a great editor now <laughs> as well. <laughs> now, he's done a superb job in his work over the many years. So I want him to uh, get you uh, aligned with where he's at and what his website is and all that. So go ahead. I'll just give it to you one more time, the new uh, phone number f- for the office, uh, 781-331-4500, um, and the website. Uh, I'll give you my other website, joelpricenutritionist.com. Superb, superb. So uh, hopefully folks will check out your, your work. It's pretty pretty special stuff, and it's been pretty special having you in here in studio. Fun being here. Thanks. And I, I get the opportunity to uh, riff and myth bust with my friends, so... We'll have to have you back and do the same thing. These are special treats for me. Also, I want to make sure, too, that folks go on our website, check it out. If you're interested in any of this information on a continuing basis, you get to go to uh, our website at maxhealing.com. It's one word, maxhealing.com. Check it out. A lot of interactive information on there and uh, a lot of uh, blog work, etc. So check that out. And uh, Ryan, how much time we got here left? We're right there. I figured we'd hear that tune any moment. We did. And we want to thank Ryan Stanton, the aforementioned Ryan Stanton, for doing a great engineering job. Good Health Natural Foods for making the show run so steadily and so healthfully all the years. I want to thank to uh, Alatess Medical Labs as well, our great sponsors and friends at Alatess. And, of course, Ed Perry, who uh, is the big daddy here at uh, WATD. We'd like to thank you for listening each and every Sunday. My name is Mark Mincole. Until next Sunday at 8, remember, be wise, be aware, be well. Make it a healthy week. Good night. <laughs>